Aggie's dealing with depression and it's one of those things that you're never cured of, you're never fixed, you're never, you know, you're never going to see it again. And for me, before that time, I probably was of the, the mindset and mentality. I didn't fully grasp it and I didn't understand it. I absolutely, you know, had empathy for people that, um, you know, were, were battling with a mental health, whether it was depression or anxiety. But for me, I, you know, when people say, oh, you know, I can't get out of bed, I don't have the motivation, I'm just so down. I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't comprehend that until I found myself. I was one of those people where I did not want to get out of bed and I did not want to see anyone. And going into big crowds made me anxious and um, it sort of all clicked for me. So at the time it was, it was hard, it was shit, it was tough and it was, um, it wasn't nice. Do you know what I mean? But coming through the other side and that's probably the really important message is that there is another side and, and you will get through it. Um, it might take a couple of months, it might take a couple of years, it might take longer, but there, there is always another end to it. Um, and for me, the tools and strategies I learned through that time, like I guess I was really fortunate. I was able to see um, a couple of different psycholog psychologists and counsellors, um, just being able to talk through it. Lots of tears, lots of tissues, um, lots of snot running out my nose because I was blubbering mess. Um, I was I was using medication as well to help me through that time. And, and like I said earlier, the yoga became a really important aspect of my, I guess, recovery. Um, the cricket was a really interesting one for me because I guess in the lowest parts of my depression, I didn't want to have anything to do with cricket. I couldn't stand the sight of it. I didn't want to train, I didn't want to watch it, I don't want to talk about it. Um, the idea of even playing cricket again, I couldn't imagine anything worse, which for someone who was a professional cricketer um, was pretty tough. Um, and I didn't really know how I was ever going to get back playing, um, playing again. And again, like I said, I, I was really fortunate. I had some great support and professional help to you know work my way back into that environment and, and it did take a lot of time you know I'm talking close to 12 18 months till I felt comfortable back in that space again but like I remember I missed a tour I made, and that was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make was missing a, a New Zealand tour um, because of my mental health um, and I remember at the time I just wanted someone to make the decision for me because I couldn't make it um, I felt like I was letting people down whatever I chose, whether I went or whether I didn't. Um, but I'm really glad I decided not to go in the end because I was in no mental space, headspace to be playing international cricket. And, yeah, for steps back to getting into that New Zealand environment again were really tough. I remember um, it would have been one of the first years I came back and we were playing out at Lincoln and Christchurch in New Zealand and we stay pretty much at the ground and it's... Um, a two minute walk from, from your accommodation to the ground. And uh, I remember waking up that morning and it, it is, it's really like a black cloud sort of hangs over you. And I thought, Oh, you know, come on, let's, let's give it the crack day of the game. Um, so I remember walking over full of anxiety and, you know, sensing a panic attack was almost brewing. Um, and just trying to work through those strategies of breathing and, you know, let's just, you know, you've done this before, let's just try, you know, what, what would you normally do before all of this? And so, okay, all right, well, I'll do what any cricketer does. I'll, I'll walk out into the middle and I'll have a look at the pitch and pretend I know what's what the pitch is going to play like. And I remember getting to the middle and I just broke down in tears, um, just overwhelmed with emotion, sadness. And um, luckily at the time, the coach sort of came over and obviously knew sort of what was going on and, and sort of said, look, don't, don't worry about playing like it. There is no rush. You don't need to do this. We can try again another day. And, and I remember literally just walking off the field and going straight back. And I actually slept through, I reckon, three quarters of that game. It was a 50 over game too. Yeah. I was, I was absolutely exhausted from that, you know, 200 metre walk to the middle of the wicket and back again. I was absolutely cooked because the emotion, the anxiety, everything that, that came with that, you know, it was probably an 20 minutes but I was I was cooked after that and, and it, you know it was a lot of instances like that whether it was during games whether it was at trainings whether it was you know even at the gym there were a lot of I guess stumbling blocks on my return to playing it's not you know yep sweet you're all good you can jump straight back 
back into it. So, yeah, it certainly was a long process. And there's times now where I still feel similar emotions where I'll get really anxious or I'll, I'll feel like I'm starting to get a panic attack. My chest will tighten up, my breathing will go. Um, and I guess going back to those tools that I learned with the breathing, staying centred, talking to people are all really valuable things now that I know I can call on and, and know that I'll be okay and can work through it, which I guess back then I, I didn't know and I couldn't see how I was going to get through it. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to continue to be part of the Inside Edge project, hit subscribe or leave a comment below. We're also on all major social media platforms. I look forward to having you along next time.